Hello and welcome everyone. Gene repressor and inducer in prokaryotic gene regulation. The aim of today's lecture is to discuss about gene repressor and inducer molecules that are important in prokaryotic gene regulation. Let's proceed. Gene regulation. What is gene regulation? It is the ability of an organism to control or regulate what proteins it makes from its DNA, how much does it make and when does it make. So all these questions are answered in gene regulation. Now we'll look at the classification of gene with respect to their expressions. With respect to gene expression, there are two types of genes. The first one is the housekeeping genes. Some genes are expressed in cells always. These are known as the constitutive genes or the housekeeping genes. For example, enzymes of the glycolysis. The enzymes of glycolysis are required all the time by an, any organism. So their genes are always expressed and they are continuously making the enzymes of glycolysis. And therefore they are a very good example of the housekeeping genes. The second class of genes with respect to their expressions are known as the facultative genes. Genes that are transcribed only when needed are called facultative genes. So these are those genes which are generally silent and they are expressed when their products are needed. Their expression may increase and when their expression increases this is known as induction or their expression may decrease and this is known as repression in different conditions and stimuli. This is regulation of gene expression. So it is the facultative genes that are under regulation whereas the housekeeping genes are expressed all the time so they cannot be regulated. Now as we know that the genes are of two types we have just discussed that they are the uh, they are the structural genes and the regulatory genes so let us look at the arrangement of these regulatory genes we know that the structural genes are those genes that make proteins whereas the regulatory genes are those genes which regulate the structural genes so let us look at the arrangement of the regulatory genes Arrangement of the regulatory DNA. So this is a section of the DNA which contains the regulatory DNA. A and B are the regions which are going to make the proteins. So these are the DNA segments that code for the proteins and they are the structural genes. This is the regulatory DNA and the regulatory DNA consists of the regulatory sequence and the regulatory genes. The reg structural genes will make an mRNA and this mRNA is translated to make protein A and B. Protein A and B are arbitrary names given to two proteins. The regulatory genes on the other hand will make a protein through uh, which is the repressor protein this this gene will first be transcribed to an mrna and the mrna will be translated to the repressor protein r the repressor protein r can go and bind to the regulatory sequence and if the repressor binds to the regulatory sequence the gene expression will be repressed on the other hand there is another molecule that is the inducer molecule. If the inducer molecule goes and binds to the regulatory sequence, then the gene induction will take place and the polymerase activity will decrease or increase depending upon 
what is attaching to the regulatory sequence. If the repressor protein attaches, the polymerase activity will decrease and if the inducer attaches, then the polymerase activity will increase. So there are two regulatory mechanisms as we saw, the increase and decrease. So when the, uh, there is decrease of mRNA synthesis or decrease of a protein, this is known as repression, where the gene is repressed. And when there is increase of gene expression, this is known as induction. So the repression is basically turning off the gene expression. It is a negative regulation of gene expression. Repressor is a molecule that represses the gene expression. So whenever there is repression, it means that the gene expression is decreased and the transcription therefore decreases. So the protein synthesis will decrease. Induction on the other hand is turning on the gene expression. Induction is the positive regulation of gene expression and inducer is a molecule that inactivates the repressor. So when the inducer inactivates the repressor, the transcription increases. So this is how the two regulatory mechanisms work and regulate the gene expression. Gene repression, these are the structural genes A, B and C. These are arbitrary name given to the genes that will make three different proteins. This is the promoter region, this is the operator region and these two together make the control sequence which is 100 to 100 base pairs long and they are just ahead of the structural genes. This is the regulatory DNA. Uh, the regulatory gene. This regulatory gene is 1000 base pairs upstream. RNA polymerase goes and binds to the promoter and from here the promoter, the polymerase can carry out transcription of the structural genes. The regulatory gene on the other hand makes mRNA through transcription. This mRNA makes a repressor protein through translation. This repressor protein now goes and binds to the operator region. So the operator is that part of the uh, gene to which the repressor binds whereas promoter is that part of the gene to which RNA polymerase attaches. Once the repressor binds to the operator gene, the polymerase cannot move forward and therefore the process of transcription stops and this leads to protein synthesis uh, inhibition and therefore this leads to gene repression. Let us try to understand gene induction now that we have already discussed gene repression. These are the structural genes A, B and C. These are arbitrary names. Structural genes are those genes that make proteins. This is the promoter region. This is the operator region. Promoter is that region to which the RNA polymerase binds. RNA polymerase recognizes the sequences in the promoter region, binds to it and initiates transcription of the structural genes. Repressor gene makes an mRNA that translates into a repressor protein. This repressor protein goes and binds to operator but in presence of an inducer, this is the inducer the repressor is unable to go to the operator and bind to it as the inducer makes a repressor-inducer complex. So this is the inducer-repressor complex. Once this inducer-repressor complex is formed, there is gene induction because the RNA polymerase can easily move forward and 
it will transcribe the operator and the structural genes and an mrna is formed this mrna is a polycystronic mrna a polycystronic mrna is an mrna from which more than one proteins are synthesized so here there are three proteins that are being synthesized from a single mrna due to gene induction this gene induction is possible because the inducer protein or the inducer molecule has formed a complex with the repressor molecule and therefore the repressor is no more in a position to go and bind to the operator this is gene thank you please like comment share and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching